Oh, hello friends, it's me, Ginny D. In case you didn't recognize me without makeup on, I'm gonna be putting on makeup in this video, so it seemed like overkill to put it on in order to take it off in order to put it on. If you follow many cosplayers, you may have seen this meme going around. It's a grid of six blank spaces, and it says, give me six characters to makeup test. I asked for suggestions on Twitter, and I got a lot of great ideas, so I picked some that I thought I would be capable of doing with the wigs and resources that I have. So this is part one. I'm going to do the first two makeup tests, in this video, and then if you want to contribute character suggestions for parts two and three, you can feel free to give me those in the comments. Really quick, for those of you who aren't cosplayers, I wanted to just talk a little bit about what a makeup test is and why cosplayers do them. In general, the words makeup test or cause test are used to refer to doing the makeup and styling of a character without necessarily creating the entire costume. There's a few different reasons to do cause tests. One is to just see how you look as a character and whether or not you like it. Especially if it's a character that you might not feel that you suit, it can be useful to do the makeup and just see if you think it'll work and if you'll be happy with it. It could also be used to practice, especially if it's a kind of makeup that you haven't done before and you're not experienced with. For example, I did a makeup test really early on while working on my Jester costume because I had never done full face paint like that before, and I didn't want to be there on the day of the con like doing that kind of makeup look for the first time and risk it looking terrible. Even just the difference between my first Jester makeup and my second Jester makeup is wild. Wild. The amount that I learned from just doing one makeup test was extreme. Finally, some people do makeup tests because they don't necessarily want to make an entire costume, or they can't make an entire costume, and they still want to do something with the character. Makeup tests are a really budget-friendly way to just kind of dip your toes into cosplay, or to create new content in between full costumes if you're the kind of person who takes a long time to create a single costume. Anyway, that's why some people do them. Today we are going to do two for this challenge, and I'm excited to show you, so let's do it! constant caffeine, that's how we do it around here. Okay, the first makeup test is going to be Yasha from Critical Role, which is why I've already put in contacts, one purple, one blue. Just to head this off, I don't recommend colored contact lens companies. I don't like that people look to influencers for that information instead of their eye doctors, so please don't ask me where I got them from because I'm not gonna tell you. I got a bunch of different suggestions for Critical Role characters, of course, since it's like a huge part of my cosplay presence, and I gotta tell you, it was really hard to pick. I didn't want to end up just doing all Critical Role characters, but I got suggestions for Vex and Avantika and Ophelia Mardoon and a bunch of really cool suggestions. I ended up picking Yasha because I felt confident that I had the wig and the items that I would need to pull it off without having to like buy any new materials. And also because I feel like Yasha has a really interesting makeup look and I'm excited to recreate it. Caitlin suggested Yasha because she knows that I'm currently working on a Pike Trickfoot cosplay, which is Ashley's character from Campaign 1, and Yasha is Ashley's character from Campaign 2, so there's a little bit of an Ashley parallel going on here. One thing about Yasha is that she has really pale skin in the art, and I know that a lot of people actually paint their skin lighter for this costume. I don't want to do that for a few reasons. One is just that I feel like it has a high potential to look like clownish. Another is that, to be frank, I'm already pretty pale. <laughs> Plus, if you make your face lighter, you have to make your neck lighter, you have to make your arms lighter, it just becomes this whole thing. However, I am going to contour with more of a gray brown to try and bring some of Yasha's pallid look into this. And hopefully that won't look real dumb. You were doing makeup thing and you're like, what the fuck is wrong with me? Why would I do that? So I'm gonna highlight first with just a white powder and then I'm gonna go in with an actual highlighter and I think that'll contribute to the complexion too in a way that isn't necessarily like painting my skin. I don't wanna go too overboard. Okay, now we're finally to the fun part. We get to do the eye makeup and the cool lip stripe. I always struggle to get black eye makeup looking black enough. I don't know if I'm just using the wrong makeup or what. And of course, I also get it all over my face. I have this little thing from e.l.f. that's like a shield. It's supposed to keep your eye makeup from going onto your cheeks. I'm gonna start by just creating the shape that I want for the eyeshadow, and then I'll go back in and I will darken it with various things. I have pretty hooded eyes, so even like an arched line looks straight when I just like look right ahead. All right, the good news about this look is that Yasha's makeup is so smudged underneath her eyes. We don't have to do anything very precise. Same reason that I like doing series makeup. It's like almost impossible to mess up, knock on wood. Oh shit. Looks like I got punched in the face, which is kind of on brand for Yasha. I mean, she mostly does the punching, but 
Jester, Yasha, I think it's pretty clear that I just wanna cosplay characters that Bo finds attractive. Okay, now we've got a shape and we need to make it all much darker. So I'm gonna go in with my liquid eyeliner and with an eyeliner pencil and really darken this up. It's so funny, it took me a long time to appreciate Ashley on Critical Role, I think, because in campaign one and in campaign two, she is absent a lot of the time. And I think that her roleplay style is so sparse. Compared to some of the other players, I think she can tend to fade into the background a little bit, but when she does have the spotlight on her, she is so good. And some of the scenes that are very Yasha-centric are some of my favorite scenes. Like I just rewatched the one where she and Nott have a long conversation while keeping watch and Nott accidentally spills the beans about Caleb's backstory. And that whole conversation is just so good. I already feel like Sam is one of the better role players in the show and them together is just gold. I feel like for 90% of any of my makeup looks, I just look terrible. And like, I'm as surprised as you guys when it comes out looking good at the end. All right, starting to look thoroughly freaky. I'm wearing my Orphan Maker shirt for this because I don't have anything that's even close to a Yasha outfit. So that's like the best I can do. Time for some strong brows. We love a lady with strong brows. Oh yeah. Okay, I'm gonna do liquid liner over the pencil liner and then I'm gonna do lashes just because I love them. I've gotten a few negative comments on this channel about my eyelashes lately, and I know I wear really big eyelashes, but it's because I fucking like them, guys. I'm gonna decide what kind of shit I wanna put on my face. And if you don't like what I put on my face, then like, you're absolutely welcome to your opinion, but if you voice that opinion in my space, you're being rude and you're not allowed in my space anymore. If you walked into my house, if I invited you into my house and I was like, come on in, have some coffee. And if someone came into my house and was like drinking my coffee and they pointed to the picture on my wall and they were like, that shit's ugly. The things you put on your wall are ugly and you should take them down. I would be like, get out of my house. I would encourage everyone to see their online spaces as their house and think about who you let in and what you let them do while they're there because you have that right to make those decisions. See, you can barely even see these lashes against the darkness of the eyeshadow anyway. So I just wanted them to exist. I just want lashes to exist. Okay, that's eyes done. So now we're just gonna do the lips and the lip stripe and then we can put on the wig and we're done. One of the other reasons I've thought about cosplaying Yasha so much is that Jester and Not both require body paint. Bo has shaved sides, I don't have shaved sides and I don't really love how undercut wigs look. So I don't think I would be happy with that. So as far as like women of the core Mighty Nine group go, Yasha is definitely like the easiest in terms of just putting it all on and putting it together. So yeah, sometimes I think about cosplaying Yasha just cause I'm lazy. So Yasha has like, it's almost like a nude lip, but it's only a nude lip if your skin tone is really gray, which hers is. So I have a nude lip shade and I'm gonna try that. And then I think I'm gonna go over it with a little bit of eyeshadow to try and gray it up a bit. This liner is like very pink, but I don't have anything better and I really do want to change my lip shape a little bit. She has like a big upper lip with like a very um, subtle Cupid's bow, like a wide Cupid's bow. And that ain't me. I have like the most 40s little Cupid's bow. It's like bloop. Can't believe this is the most nude lip shade that I own. And look how ugly it is. I never wear this. I put it on my skin once and I was like, nope, never putting that on. Ah, that's working great. I look straight up dead. Okay, stripe time. So I was not confident in my ability to do this stripe straight, so I think I'm gonna put some tape on my face. I'm just using scotch tape. Eh. I'm not gonna be able to talk. I can't tell if it's straight, but at least it'll have sharp edges. Hey, Josh, come here. Can I first? No. Yeah. Can you bring me a little cup of water? Yep. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna mix up some face paint. I feel like this is gonna be too wide. Let's see. Hmm. Could have been worse. <laughs> it is really wide and it's not quite blue enough. Balls. Okay, we'll clean it up a little. I feel like I might've been better off just freehanding it at this point. I think that's as straight as it's gonna get. <laughs> that's okay, Yasha isn't straight. Why should her stripe be? All right, I'm gonna put on the wig and we'll see how it all looks together. smell like a crayon. I'm sorry, I was trying to do the whole thing. Like, I killed my family, I'll throw you under a bridge. I'm learning how to people. I'm pretty 
pleased with how this came out, especially considering that I sort of whipped up this wig last night from my old Esmeralda wig. I have grayed the ends with baby powder. In general, I feel like I don't really have the bone structure for these kinds of characters. Like I have such a baby face, I just look like a baby in war paint. But I like this stripe, that's cool. Probably not a full cosplay for me, but this at least makes me feel like I can pull off the vibe a little bit, maybe? I don't know, what do you think? What is ever gonna bring me down? The next makeup test is going to be Alphaba from the musical Wicked, which is one of my favorite musicals. And yes, I know that makes me basic in the eyes of the musical theater crowd. That's what I am, I guess I'm basic. I just have never really had the opportunity to see that many shows, so I'm only really familiar with the ones that are the most famous and that have big touring productions and that have movies made of them. I know it's unpopular to like movie musicals, but I do. I really like them. So I've always loved Elphaba and have really related to her character, and whenever I'm singing Wicked with another person, I always sing her part in the songs, but I never considered cosplaying her because there was a huge chunk of time in my cosplay life that I just absolutely refused to do any costume that required face paint. I didn't really know how to do it and I had seen a lot of people at conventions do a bad job of it and I was so worried that I was gonna be one of those people with like splotchy, poorly shaded face paint and that I was just gonna be embarrassed. And I think I also like seriously overestimated the discomfort associated with it. In reality, it's really not too far off from having a full face of foundation. But because of that, Elphaba never even really crossed my mind as a possible cosplay. And then I discovered Jester. And now I face paint myself every every two weeks. I guess I just needed a character that I loved enough to defeat my hatred of face paint. I actually read the book of Wicked by Gregory Maguire long before I saw the show, and they are really different. Like, of course they're different. You can't directly translate a book into a musical. That just wouldn't be possible. And this isn't to say that I think that the musical did anything wrong. I think they did a really good job adapting the source material for a stage show. But the book is, of course, able to tackle a lot more complex themes. And even though Wicked as a show is pretty dramatic and pretty dark in a lot of ways, it's also a musical. There are some subjects they tackle in the book that you just really couldn't tackle in a musical. Like, it's strongly implied that Elfie has some unusual stuff going on with like sex and gender, not necessarily in her identity, but in her physical body. When she's born, they at first think that she's a boy and then like realize that they were mistaken and that she's actually a girl. And later in a sex scene with Fiero, he like notices a weird shadow on her body and he mentions how she will only ever have sex with him in the dark and she like wears a sash around her waist. That's the kind of stuff that of course that would be incredibly difficult to explore in a musical even if you wanted to, but I always really liked that. I'm not sure if he was like trying to do something specific with that or if he was just trying to contribute to sort of the otherness of Elphaba as a character. It's way harder to get inside your ears with a sponge than and a brush, let me tell you. So I'm using the same paint color for this that I used for my not makeup test. It is a little bright for Elphaba, so I think I'm gonna go over it in this kind of metallic green eyeshadow just to kinda give it a little depth. One of the things I do differently in my Jester makeup now that I wasn't doing back when I first made my tutorial is that I have started going over all of the paint with a blue powder that is a little bit cooler, a little bit more purple than the paint color that I use. It's partially to bring that color just a little bit closer to my tights and gloves, but it also works really well as both a sealant and a way to even out any patchy color. It can be very, very difficult to get face paint to be even, especially a color like blue. I feel like colors with more warm tones like red or pink are a lot easier to get even on the skin, but incidentally a lot harder to wash off. Okay, now I have a base, so I am going to do some contouring. I have this slightly darker metallic green eyeshadow that's also a little bit more yellow, which is great because I feel like Elfie's shading on her face, in the musical at least, is often done with like gold tones. Gotta have those witchy cheekbones. One of the good things about cosplaying a character like Alphaba is that she's been played by so many different people. It's not like I'm trying to make my face look like Idina Menzel. Instead, it's like I get to take all of the hallmark features of Alphaba, like green skin and like witchy high cheekbones and whatever else I think represents her as a character and just transpose them onto my own face. Now I'm just highlighting with this kind of shimmery yellow from this tiny little green palette. She doesn't really have blush in the makeup that they do for the musical, so I am gonna skip that. My paint water looks like some sort of noxious potion. 
have another drink, my dark-eyed beauty. I've got one more night left here in town. Okay, I'm going to do some eyeshadow. I'm gonna start with this same dark green that I used for my contour, and then I'm gonna darken it up with a couple like shimmery gold coppery tones from a nudes palette. Even if a character doesn't canonically have eyeshadow, I think it's always a good idea to do a little bit of eyeshadow in a body paint look. Okay, brows. We're just doing lots of bold black brows today. I think I'm gonna have to paint my hands because I don't have any like gloves this color and I really want to be able to take pictures and video with like my hands in the frame. I hate painting my hands. All right, I'm gonna do a liquid liner like I always do. Do you know why everybody should learn how to do a good winged liner? Because everyone deserves a chance to fly. You know, I think cosplay makeup actually has a lot in common with stage makeup. Both of them are meant to be viewed from a bit further away. Both of them are meant to be exaggerated. Often you're portraying a character that doesn't necessarily look realistic or natural. I think one of the biggest mistakes that I see beginner cosplayers making is underdoing or not doing makeup. It can be so instrumental in communicating just the aesthetic of a character. And even a character that doesn't appear to wear much makeup is probably wearing makeup. Like Game of Thrones is a great example. Not many of the characters in Game of Thrones appear to be wearing makeup, but I guarantee you that they all are because they're movie stars and they're on like a major high budget film set. The chances of any of us looking like Amelia Clark without makeup on, slim to none. And I definitely fell into this trap early on when cosplaying because I didn't really wear much makeup in my day-to-day -day life, so I wasn't good at it and I didn't really understand the impact that it could have. I think it's kind of funny sometimes to look back on what I perceived as just like a normal face of makeup five years ago versus now. It used to be that a full face of makeup to me was like concealer, blush, eyeliner, mascara. Now a full face of makeup is like primer, concealer, foundation, contour, highlight, blush, eyeliner, mascara, eyelashes, brows, lip liner, lipstick. So yeah, today's hot tip for beginner cosplayers is just watch makeup tutorials on YouTube. Learn to do makeup better. I've learned all of my makeup from watching videos online and practicing. And I've learned it all just in the last few years too. I didn't do makeup in high school. I didn't even really do makeup in college. All right, just the lip left. I do not have a green lipstick. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put on some chapstick and then I'm going to blend eyeshadow into it and hope that that works. I'm gonna use this same eyeshadow that I contoured my cheekbones with. Oh my God, it's working. That's pretty good coverage, honestly. All right, final touch. I'm just gonna add a touch of this kind of coppery, red sparkly stuff into the middle of the lip to more mimic the way they do her lips on stage. I think that just about does it. I'm gonna put on the wig and the hat that I made last night because I'm really extra and then self-indulgently sing a bunch of Wicked songs. It's just, for the first time, I feel wicked. And one day he'll say to me, Alphaba, girl who is so superior, shouldn't a girl who's so good inside have a matching exterior? And since folks here to an absurd degree seem fixated on your verdigree, would it be all right by you if I degree and if I you? Well, of course that's not important to me. All right, why not? I'll reply, oh, what a pair we'll be, the wizard and I. Yes, what a pair we'll be, the wizard and I. Here I am back to my normal level of greenness. This was a lot of fun. I hope that you guys enjoyed it too. I would love to do the other four makeup tests on video like this. If you have any suggestions for characters you would like to see me do makeup tests for, please put them into the comments. I also wanted to mention that next week I am releasing a brand new music video featuring an original D&D themed love song that I wrote. It's really cute. I hope that you like it. And the most exciting part is that I teamed up with Autumn Orange, who is the creator of the amazing Critical Role lo-fi albums you may have 
I've seen around. Autumn Orange has created a remix of my original song and it will be going up on their YouTube channel on the same day that the song goes up on mine, so make sure that you are subscribed to them so you don't miss that. You can check out the rest of their music on Spotify and other music streaming platforms under the name Autumn Orange, and you can find them on Twitter, at Sonic Vaughn.